The Western world is in what feels like a free fall when it comes to distinguishing between right and wrong, reality and imagination. Today, basic and natural distinctions like the differences between a man and a woman are blurred and even rejected. Some in the church, in an effort to recover traditional gender roles, are eager to discuss the idea of biblical masculinity. What are the characteristics of a godly man, though? And is the pendulum swinging too far? So the other day I was on Twitter when a post written by a pastor caught my attention. Dale Partridge writes, Prayer breakfast masculinity is dying. Pints and psalm singing masculinity is growing. This is good. Now, I'm not saying that prayer breakfasts are wrong. However, it's worth noting that prayer breakfasts were initially started by women and later adopted by men in the 1960s. It's a more feminine expression of spirituality that shaped a generation of men. Today, many men are reevaluating church practices and seeking more masculine expressions of their faith. Activities like singing psalms and raising pints in the public square resonate more with the warrior spirit of men, and that's a positive shift. So I don't have any problem with drinking beer, and I certainly don't have any problem with singing psalms. I do have a problem with this take, though, especially because it seems to me like in Scripture, one of the chief characteristics of a godly man is prayer. And not just prayer on your own, in your prayer closet, but everywhere. Think about what the Apostle Paul says writing to Timothy. And by the way, if you're thinking about, okay, what are the characteristics of a godly man? First Timothy, Second Timothy, those are great places to look because Paul is writing to his son in the faith, we might say Timothy, giving him instructions for how one ought to conduct themselves in the household of God, the church of the living God. And one of those instructions that he gives is men should be men of prayer. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. So one of the things that's really interesting about that text in particular is it seems like the Apostle Paul is giving gender-specific exhortations. He's saying, men, godly men are known for being committed to prayer, praying at all times, lifting up your hands to the Lord. Women... Don't be known for vanity. And it's not that Paul is saying men don't struggle with vanity and women don't struggle with prayer. It's that he's identifying particular things that he knows men and women might struggle with, in fact. And so he says, guys, men of the church, here's how you should be known. And it's really interesting. If you were to ask yourself, you know, okay, what's my image of a godly man? What does a godly man look like? what comes to your mind? Some people, you know, this guy in a flannel with a great big beard or something like that, holding an ax or maybe holding a pint of beer and singing psalms. I don't know. Paul says the godly man looks like a man who is praying with hands raised, not just in his prayer closet, but everywhere. And so as we're talking about masculine and feminine expressions of piety, if we can even call it that, One thing we have to be very careful with is not allowing the world's definition of masculinity to creep into the church. Now, Dale does give some more context. He writes, as we know, multiple studies prove that the Western church has been bleeding men for over 30 years. We should ask ourselves why. I believe women and feminism have influenced Western Christianity more than we even realize. A prayer breakfast can certainly have a masculine element, but its overall structure tends to feel more aligned with the feminine approach to spiritual life. Historically, men have typically approached prayer as a private, individual act, unless it's on Sunday, while women have viewed prayer and spiritual life as more communal. Now, it strikes me as ironic when masculine men blame all the world's problems on women. Why is the Western church bleeding? It's women and feminism. Echoing Adam's words in Genesis chapter 3, verse 12, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. It's true that the church in North America has been hemorrhaging, and for longer than 30 years, actually. Both men and women are de-churching at a rapid rate. Among those who have de-churched, it's pretty evenly split between the sexes. 52% are men, 48% women, according to Jim Davis and Michael Graham in their recent book, The Great Dechurching. 
But the problem isn't women or prayer breakfasts. Actually, the very thing Dale suggests is a feminine expression of piety. Praying in groups or in public is precisely what the Apostle Paul, a man's man if there ever was one, said was a chief characteristic of godly men. Maybe the problem is that there aren't very many men out there who are known for praying in every place with their hands lifted high to God. Maybe that's what we need to recover in the church and in particular as men.